Hey guys, welcome back. I've got a couple of projects I'm working on that could use some gears, so I decided to order one of those cheap 8-piece Chinese gear cutter sets. Time to make some original content. Despite spending the better half of $80 on the gear cutter set, for some reason I decided not to buy the gear cutter armor, because, you know, that's an extra $15. It's always cheaper to make things yourself, right? The machining you're witnessing now is of a material called 174 PH Stainless. It's basically my favorite stainless steel to machine because I can always get an amazing surface finish. PH in the name actually stands for precipitation hardening. That means when you heat it up for a long time, it actually develops these little crystals inside of it which prevent cracks from propagating. For our purposes, that basically means it's a very straightforward heat treating cycle. You just heat it up and let it air cool. I should note that 174 pH doesn't actually get as hard as, say, a 400 series stainless, and definitely not as hard as an alloy steel. So, for this, um, you know, it may not be the best application using it for a tool holder, but I had a little extra piece of it left. It's actually what's left of the spindle blank from the jeweler's lathe. The basic procedure we're going to follow here is first I'm turning the shank. And I'm gonna turn it around and I'm gonna turn the uh, the arbor diameter. And I'm gonna leave everything nice and oversized so when I heat treat it, if it warps at all, I have extra material to uh, turn back down. I do actually drill some centers in, uh, in either side of the part, that way I can turn it between centers if I want. You're going to see that I don't do that. Um, one awesome thing about this lathe we have at my work is that the spindle run out and the chuck run out is only about a thousandth of an inch. This is by no means a, a typical situation, you would normally expect to have much more run out in a three jaw chuck especially, and uh, in that case you'd want to use a four jaw chuck to get everything nice and true or to turn it between centers like I'm alluding to. So I'm cutting off the back side of the insert, um, this is for two reasons. The first reason is I want to cut into the center, I don't want to push it off the center. And uh, the second reason is that I want the chips to have lots of space to leave the cutting area, so they don't get sort of jammed in there and rub against the workpiece. You can imagine if I cut uh, the other direction, there's a little bit less space for them to evacuate. I have to admit, I'm fairly comfortable cutting stainless steel now, but one thing that still freaks me out is drilling it. I'm just using the tailstock to get the tap started nice and straight, and then I'm going to go in with the hand tap. Um, it's fine to sort of rotate the chuck in neutral like I am to, uh, to tap a hole, but especially in a part I've already put some time into, I kind of want to want to have a better feel of it, so I use the, well, the cheapest tap wrench I could find. After tapping the hole, I actually recenter drilled it to get that nice 6 degree angle, and uh, 
Now I'm just uh, turning it with the center in to make sure it's nice and cylindrical. These uh, cheap Chinese gear cutters I got actually have a keyway in them. It looks like the keyway was cut in with a hacksaw, but I still figured I'd better use a key to drive them, so I'm just cutting a little keyway in here now. You could conceivably get around using a key if you used a left-hand screw and then it would tighten as a cut, or if you use a right-hand screw but cut in reverse. I actually occasionally have nightmares about tapping M3 holes in stainless steel parts I've put lots of hours into. I don't think I could be an aerospace machinist. So you may be wondering why in my little recipe it includes a small piece of stainless steel heat treating bag instructions. That's a little piece of paper. You throw the little piece of paper in the little envelope and the paper will actually turn into charcoal. It'll absorb all the oxygen in the envelope and uh, it sucks the oxygen away from the metal, so a little less chance of oxidizing. So now I'm basically hard turning everything to uh, final dimension. I was a little intimidated by the idea of hard turning at first, but it's actually not a huge deal. Um, I guess especially when your machine has enough horsepower to do it, but Carbide beats steel, even if it's hard steel, and of course, 17.4 gets to be, I think, 44 Rockwell anyway, so it's not that hard. So we're basically finished with the body of the arbor and now we just have to turn a cap to hold the cutter in place. This is just some 304 stainless steel out of the crap... <laughs> Freudian. This is just 304 stainless steel out of the scrap bin.
absolutely loathe these six flute countersinks. I thought I'd give them another chance here because I'm cutting a fairly low speed and a big lathe, but nevertheless, they always seem to turn like a hexagonal shaped countersink. Has anyone ever had any luck with these? I really like the one flute ones, but I've just never ever been able to cut a proper countersink with the six flute ones. This part of the operation was a little bit too fast and it shrieked like a banshee, so I decided to put a low pass filter on it in post processing to, you know, spare your ears. There's actually a third part to this assembly. It's a little brass key. I just didn't think to record it, I just cut it on the Tormac, but that's what it looks like. So this old Tony, well, this old, I call him, it's his first name, um, he made a video about cutting gears and, you know, it was really interesting, but I think I'm going to go one step ahead and I'm going to make a video dedicated to cutting some 15 tooth gears, which I need for an upcoming project. In all seriousness, this old Tony's video is excellent, you should definitely go watch it. He covers a lot of the details I'm kind of glossing over. So, uh, yeah, if you plan on cutting gears, I would definitely recommend watching that video. Two important things with this cut. Um, first, you want your cutting forces to go into your indexing head. Uh, that'll just cause less chatter. And second, you want to be conventional cutting, like you always should in a... Uh, manual machine, but especially here with a large cutter diameter. This is a 15 tooth gear, so I'm actually rotating 24 degrees after each cut. You really get a lot of practice with your times tables when you're cutting gears. Now that all the teeth are cut, I just have to cut them. I mentioned before that there's very little run out in the three dot chucks I'm using, so you can kind of switch between the two, but in general you'd want to be a lot more careful with aligning the bore and the pitch diameter. Yeesh. I must admit, it is a little bit depressing cutting away these perfectly formed teeth. Well guys, that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Cheers!